Hey everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. In this video, we are going to learn about how we can find hidden information that can be useful for us as a cybersecurity researcher from JavaScript files. So mainly we are going to focus on the client side part of the application. So if you haven't checked out my previous video in which I've shown you that how we can find vulnerabilities in client side uh, application which uses JavaScript, like the modern frameworks, for example, React.js, for example, uh, angular and all right so go ahead and check it out the link is given in the description as well as you can see it on the right side of the screen and now with that being said let's get started so the thing that we are going to do is in this particular video we are going to use a tool that is going to extract sensitive information from the javascript file for us right so many developers often left some crucial information like some secret api keys some access token sometimes even the jwt uh, secret keys and all right directly to the javascript which means that they are actually presented to us in the JavaScript, in the source code. So we need to find it. In this video, we are going to see the automated way of doing this. And in the upcoming videos, we are going to see how we can manually enumerate those particular sensitive information from JavaScript files. So let's see how we can do that. For that, we need to install a tool which is known as Mandra, right? So spelling is M-A-N-T-R-A. So let's see how we can install it. So this is the tool right over here. Don't worry, this link is given in the description. You just go and click on this link and you will be redirected to this particular application right over here as you can see now so we are going to use this tool so let's copy this let's just paste it out in the terminal so let's say git clone just wait for a few seconds and as you can see the file has been cloned go to this directory now we need to actually build the main.go file we need to compile the file to get the bytecode right the first thing first we need to install golang if you don't have installed in your machine so just go and type sudo apt install golang minus y so this will install golang into your machine and as you can see in my case golang is already the newest version right now the second thing is that once we have uh, installed Golang into our machine, we can simply go ahead and type code build main.go. Since the file name is main.go, so we just need to hit enter. Let's wait for a few seconds and it will compile the file for us. So let's wait. And as you can see, right over here, the file has been compiled successfully. Let me just clear it out. And here is the bytecode, right? So let's move this particular file to the bin directory so that we can access that particular file from anywhere in the terminal. So we can type sudo move main to bin and let's change the file name to be mantra and let's hit enter and as you can see the file has been transferred and now if everything has been installed successfully then we should be able to access mantra directly like this. So let's type mantra and as you can see right over here, it is showing the screen and we can also type minus h to see the available functionalities for us so we can specify user agent we can increase the thread numbers and we can also go with the silent process right so this is how we can install mantra now the second thing is we need to install a tool that can crawl all the possible links right so we need to install a tool that can crawl all the possible links from a given endpoint and this tool is none other than a tool known as katana so if you have watched my previous videos, then you are already aware of this particular tool, which is used to actively enumerate links from a particular given URL, right? Let's see how we can install it real quick. So you can just go and type Katana like this. And don't worry, this link will be also given in the description. We can just copy this and we can just clone it right over here. We can just type it, clone, paste it, just wait a few seconds and just go to Katana. Let's go to CMD folder. Let's go to Katana. And we need to build this particular file. So again, just type go build main.go. Enter. Let's wait for a few seconds. And as you can see, the file has been cloned. And if we type ls, we'll see the bytecode right over here. We can just go and type sudo move main to pin. And we can change the file name to Katana. So I already have installed Katana in my machine, so I'm not going to paste it again, but you need to do the step in order to install Katana directly in your bin directly. And now once we have Katana installed, you can just go and type Katana like this, minus minus help. And if everything has been successfully done, then we should be able to see this screen that we are seeing right over here, right? 
So this is how we can install Katana. Now we have done all the installation part. We have all installed all the important tools. Now what we need to do in order to find the information from JavaScript file, right? For that, let's try to see that how we can use uh, Mantra for example. I can just go and type Mantra over here. And right over here, you can see we have this help. And as you can see, it we are passing the JavaScript files directly to Mantra, right? And after that, it is giving us all the sensitive information, right? So how it is doing it, if you want to understand how it is doing it, you can just go and click on this main.go. This is the actual code. And you'll see we have this secret list, right? So in this secret list, we have all the possible combination of, uh, you know, possible APIs, possible secret keys that could be hidden in that particular application. You can see we have something like this. We have all the regular expression. We have AKIA, which is for uh, Amazon AWS access key, right? We have all this sensitive information, like we have the S3 uh, buckets right over here, right? So it is actually checking all this regular expression into the string, into the text of JavaScript code, right? And if the text matches to its particular regular expression, then it will give that particular string back to us on the terminal, right? Simple as that. So let's try to see that how we can use this and let's try to create a simple algorithm that will do this uh, whole bunch of thing automatically for us right so for example let's try to say we have a target let's say it's px we just open my target over here let's say we have this particular target right and we want to get the hidden information from the javascript file in present in this particular application what we can do now is we can copy this link like this, let's close it. We can open it right over here. And now what we can do over here is we can, first thing first, we need to extract all the possible JavaScripts from this particular endpoint, right? How we can do that? So let's try to see how we can do this. Let me just go back to Mantra and let's, first of all, let's try to get all the possible links containing the JavaScript file. So we can type katana minus q we can paste the link like this then we can specify minus jc for the javascript we can specify the depth for example i'm going to set the depth to two you can increase the depth it will crawl the links depending on the depth that you have chosen so the more depth the more it's going to crawl right then we can go minus o the output and let's say urls dot txt right the first thing is we are extracting all the possible urls Let's wait a few seconds and you'll see that we are getting a bunch of URLs over here. And then what we need to do is we need to filter out the JavaScript URLs from this particular bunch of URLs, right? So let's wait till the Katana gets completed and then we'll be able to filter out the rest of the things. Now, over here, as you can see, right now the scan has been completed. So it has brought the links for us and now you can see we have aspx we have css files and if you check over here we have dot js file right so we are interested in this js file only right we only are looking for the files containing this js extension the links contain this js extension so we can actually filter that so let me show you how we can do this first thing first uh we have this url.txt if i type cat url.txt We'll see we get all these links right and now let me just clear it we can use the grip functionality to filter out all the possible links which has js in it right dot js because we know that the javascript file will end with a dot js right hit enter and as you can see we've got bunch of links now there's a small thing, small issue over here. The issue is that, you know, although we are getting all the JavaScript files, but our, uh, this particular string matching string is filtering out is actually filtering this one as well, right? As you can see, so this is not an endpoint, right? This is not the extension. This is just a path, right? We don't want to filter this in real scenario because sometimes we may be able to get false positive if we use this particular, uh, query right so to eliminate that to eliminate all the false positives what we can do here is we can add a dollar like i have shown over here and if we hit enter now 
you see now we are getting all the links that ends with dot js over here we are also getting the links end with js but we are also getting this js as well right which is inside the path so this is a small difference between this particular dollar sign so now we have done that what we can do now is we can save this to a file let's say js.txt and if i type js.txt you'll see that we have all the links ends with .js which means we have all the links of the javascript files in this particular application now it could be possible that this particular application has more java link but since we have set the depth to 2 which means that the crawl has not been done in in, uh, in more depth that's why we are getting only these many javascript files right nevertheless we can just feed this to mantra like this right and then we can hit enter and let's wait what will happen and what will mantra show us let's wait for a few seconds and i'll get back to you once we have any update from this particular tool now as you can see we got nothing over here right we didn't got any information so what we can do now is we can again scan this application and this time let's set the depth to four let's hit enter let's wait for a few seconds now this time you will see that we are getting a lot of links compared to the previous command that i have uh, used right because we have set the depth to four now as you can see right over here the scanning has been completed now we have bunch of urls over there right let's try to filter out all the javascript from this you can use grep and then use command let's hit enter and now let's see as you can see this time we have a bunch of javascript file over there, right let's read this to mantra and let's wait for the output right so let's wait till mantra shows any output and i'll get back to you once it showed anything interesting now as you can see right over here we've got three uh, api keys right so i'm not going to check out what these api keys means but we can go ahead and copy this link and we can check out the source code to understand more about what these keys are actually all about right maybe they are false positive but in most of the cases mantra will actually get you all the legitimate api keys right so this is basically how we can use mantra along with katana to find hidden information in an automated way from the javascript files i hope that you have understood it let me just stop it now so again i hope that you have understood it if you have any doubts if you have any issues feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section and also do join our telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going under cyber security and bug bounty hunting and now with that being said if you like the way i teach then i am currently running two courses the first one is bug bounty the ultimate guide to hunt account takeovers where you are going to learn that how to hack websites misconfiguration to take over any victim's account right we are going to do all these interesting things in the practical way and the second course which i'm currently running is hacking windows with python so if you are interested in how to create malwares how attackers create malwares to hack any uh, windows machine uh, to bypass antiviruses to execute system commands and do a bunch of cool stuff like ac accessing webcams and all then check out that particular course of mine in which i've shown you how we can create that actual malware using python again that course is also fully demonstrated in practical way so if you're interested the links is given in the description you can check them out and now with that being said, keep learning and thanks for watching.